sloppy tappy in the brain like Tyson. Fight back like you're trained by Tyson. Eat veggies for the taste, no Tyson. When a cop that's so enticing, but I invited you over like six times. Hi, um, my name is Chico De La Rosa. I live in Baguio City, so I've been living here almost my whole life. But I was born in um, Tugigaro City, Cagayan Valley. My passion is also my work, luckily. So I'm a photographer by heart. But I'd also like to introduce myself as a content creator since I don't really limit myself to just doing photography. Um, for the most part, I really like storytelling. My name is Ian. Uh, I'm hailing from the city of Vancouver. I'm 23 years young. Um, and my pronouns are he and him. Tito, if you will. Kuya, you know. And um, I was fortunate enough to live a kind of nomadic life until my family settled here in Vancouver. Um, for a lot of you astrologers out there, I am an Aquarius. Um, to be more specific, my son, or my rising, I think, is a Leo. My sun is an Aquarius. And then my moon is a Pisces. So that's that. <laughs> I have quite a varied range of interests, I'd say, um, from like, weird stuff like aliens and conspiracy theories to like very academic things like you know international security and foreign policy i don't know why but like i'm super into that like international relations stuff i'm patty i'm 21 i'm actually a student university student third year so in a few months i'll be a senior and graduating soon and like Part-time, I do freelance work, like brand strategy and design. I was into like arts since I was a kid and then I found out, oh, I can do this for a living. And then the reason why I got into strategy was because like, I guess the side of me was always like into the more like business aspect. Cause like I come from like a Chinese family, so it's very business. I started getting into coffee during the quarantine and like, practically like, I'm still experimenting on like the types of drinks I can make, but like I'm like a beginner in this type of thing. And like I really like also during the quarantine, I've been getting into like watching more TV shows, like Korean dramas. So I'm Don. Don. Um, I'm based in Antipolicy Theories. I'm an artist, um, mostly photos, and I do creative writing as well. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a Taurus, Gemini cusp, but some say cusp don't exist. So I'm just sticking with the Taurus. Yeah. And yeah, I'm really, I'm really passionate about movies and films and anything that you can consume, basically. So I had like a really bad case of burnout a couple of years ago and that was like really it was like a slap in the face that made me kind of like fix my like lifestyle and I was like a sophomore year student and like I wanted to freelance part-time juggling ACADs with work and I was part of like this college organization they were against child sexual abuse and harassment so we were really undermanned and I was like doing all the work. So like I had to balance like org work, class, and then I also wanted really wanted to do freelance. So in a way I kind of like got really drained because I felt like I was doing everything. And like came to a point where you know where you're so like tired that one small inconvenience and then you're just gonna start crying. <laughs> After an org meeting, like something happened and then it was really small inconvenience and then I just bursted into tears. So I think even the better question is when have I never burnt out, right? Um, <laughs> like this day in life, you know, like let's grind, grind, grind. I think where it stems from is this whole idea of, okay, like my parents were like children who are immigrants' parents have moved literal miles away from their home, uh, from their home country and like, you know, like you kind of have to give back that sense of crap. Like I need to 
get it together in, in a sense where you know what you need to buckle up your parents didn't fly from wherever just for you to do nothing with your life right like a little bit of my work situation when i was in university or like back when i was in like first third year i was also serving and i remember this was like kind of like i'm like at a breaking point and i remember i think because customers you got to take into account like how tough dealing with customers are right you're tired from school you get to work you know droggy like with so many things and on top of that, like some customers just make it even harder for you. So I think there's just this one point where I just took a 30 minute break, let's say. And like, give me a second, I need some air. I need some air, I need air now. So yes, I had a mini breakdown in the washroom. <laughs> no, but it was one of those things where like, give me a second, like, let me just breathe people. Let me just breathe. And I think in that sense, I was like, okay, like this is my body kind of telling me, take a step back, right? Take a step back, take a breather. That burnout, like I just remember for work at least, like I took two to three weeks off. Like I did, it, I think once you start dreaming about working, like dreaming in a sense where you sleep and you think you're at work, that's when you need to stop. Take a week, two week break and just, yeah because it's unhealthy like for you to dream about working for you to just sleep and think you're working a shift like no <laughs> that is not free real estate y'all need to pay me extra hours <laughs> no i'm not gonna go into the specifics but the whole gist of it um what happened was uh last a few months ago um i was receiving a lot of projects I didn't realize that I should have also thought about my team back then because I was receiving a lot of projects at that time. It's like I almost forgot about my responsibilities that as as a team member or as team leader. I really went into this position where I thought I was doing the right things, but then that was the most difficult part was not realizing that I'm already tired. At that time, I made the decision that um, maybe I'm not fit for this job anymore. Maybe I should take a break. So the first, the first thing that I did was I took a quick break and to realign, realign what I really wanted to do, realign what I really prioritized, my well-being. Also, because I care for these people, I made the decision to leave the team because I mean in my in my perspective um I think another person would would be more fit to do the job that I had The big self-care move that I made was Last year, before the pandemic, I was in a relationship. I was really insecure about myself, on my body, and on my work, and everything else. Then when the pandemic happened, um, you know, I, I had the privilege to work on myself. So the first thing I did was I started to eat healthy, I avoided junk food, I work out a lot, like a lot, like four times a week. And it, it, it's really good. Like the first two weeks is hard, but after that, working out is really good for yourself and your overall health. Then I started to read. <laughs> I picked up the habit of reading. I mean, like casual reader naman ako before, but it's really different, but when you pick it up as a habit, talaga, wow. This I can say that wow because I really gain a lot from books. Na change my perspectives on how I view myself and the world. So far, so far. Oh my god. 
my favorite book of all time for sure the idiot yeah it just really you know it it just contemplates on life na am i doing this right or am i going to you know going somewhere i can really relate to it like i love it so much it's so it's so me i think it's in the smallest things diba like waking up early having your coffee break at least 10 minutes in the morning before working then on the bus i think it, it's in those small things like hiking during the weekends ganun having just to talk to your friend diba talk talking to your friend after work or or also maybe maybe drinking in the weekends as well it's it's in the small things talaga but of course when taking care of ourselves we also want to make sure that we feel that we're growing in a way we feel that we're we're breaking this we're breaking the, these patterns i think when you feel like you're breaking these certain patterns you also feel yourself growing it's like when you're reading a book right you don't just read from the beginning and then the end you also take time to let yourself cry let yourself laugh right so and then you also to make time to take the notes your favorite words maybe a word that you just learned from this book you know you you take in or you absorb the small things and the good things the first step really was like saying no to work that i really don't want to do like even if you're my friend i'm not going to do it sorry and like really setting boundaries for myself because back then i was like just grinding like no break and so like since then especially during the quarantine because it's really hard to like separate work and like be sure because you're like working from home so i told myself like okay after this certain time i'm only going to watch like k dramas or like read a book i'm not going to do any like work related stuff So yeah, it's more about like setting boundaries and like making sure in like the weekends, like as much as possible, don't work because like I usually feel so restless sometimes, so I have to make myself work. In terms of just self care from like after a burnout, like I I just I'm a big skincare person, like I really love the pop the mask on type of thing at night. just i just love like you know feeling good and i feel like that equates to me kind of healing emotionally and but yeah so usually if i have like these burnouts like what i do especially with social media is i would kind of deactivate my instagram account i have like a balcony that i always usually hang out into like if it's a starry night like i would just kind of you know look at the trees like look at the things around me and just compare myself to how really small i am in comparison to the world and that you know there's so many things happening if you just look out in the sky you could kind of hear the busy streets and like the highway um but yeah like enjoying the little things and like even as small things like just staying an extra 5 minutes in bed or like an hour maybe two <laughs> this breathing like legitimately just breathing you know like yeah just after that like long stressful day where you're kind of like i don't even remember when i actually breathe you were kind of just go 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 and just for you to just yeah just to pause like that's kind of how i like replenish my energies <laughs> kind of like pushing like hustle culture and grind culture to like everyone and like everyone's feeling the pressure of it like oh they're working so i have to work but then like i think like now i see how important self care is cuz if you don't take care of yourself you're really going to break i think right now my biggest thing or like to think to share is just to be like grateful like gratitude really helps you out mentally and physically um yeah and i think i just had a thing with just staying rooted and staying grounded like i really love that but yeah no i just think just add gratitude to your daily routine yung pinaka important that i learned talaga lately was to 
prioritize your well-being. Start when you start choosing ourselves, even if it means having to disappoint people, it's it's fine. And I was listening to this certain podcast that says, um, I mean, living an exceptional life doesn't have to be so grand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe living an exceptional life means having to do the things that you really like to do. Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind. You can come over and stay all through the night. Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind. You 